Hi, and welcome back to Bioinformatics Tools Programming in Python with Qt, part two. This video is gonna be very short. In this video, we're gonna focus purely on laying out the structure for our DNA engine project. We will start adding elements and programming them in our next video, okay? So let's take a look at the previous code. This is where we left off in our last video. We have created a sample window with a button, the text edit, and the checkbox. We just made sure that we have the virtual environment up and running with all the needed libraries for Python installed, which is a cute framework. Okay, so now let's clean the slate, so to speak. We're gonna get rid of all the test files we used in our last video to test the uh, setup here. So we're gonna go and get rid of these engine.uipy, engine.ui, and main.py. Let's delete them. Okay. And now we are left with these pip files, which are the configuration files, and that's fine, we're gonna keep them here. So the first file we're gonna create is going to be our engine file, .py, engine.py. This is gonna have a class, a main DNA engine class in it. Then we need an application that is going to use that engine. In this case, we're gonna have an application here. And then let's create this uh, engine UIPy file. Now that we have our template files ready, let's practice by using the designer again. I'm gonna go and open the terminal here and type designer. Okay, it's loading up. Make sure it's main window, create. Let me make this a bit larger, I guess. Let's make the window smaller. Okay, and let's find the name, the text here. It says windows title. Let's change it to DNA engine. Okay, now we can see that it's changed here too. And let's drop a button again and find the same property of the button where it says a text in it. Okay, let's see where it was. We can actually filter that by text. And let's change the name to, let's say, cure everything. Okay, now we know that you have these properties here. These are the first properties we just uh, changed, but we're gonna change a lot more in the future. Uh, mostly through Python, not through the designer itself, okay? Now let's save this file again. We can see that we are in that folder. And let me actually do this, show all files. And I'm going to use the same, engineui.py, but instead of py, we need to have a UI, correct? So we have created this test window again. Let's close it off and we can see it's here. Okay. In our last video, we looked at the a converter tool for UI to convert the XML file into our Py file. So let's do that again. If you are using Visual Studio like me or um, you are still in this virtual environment, which you can see here, if we're gonna open up the uh, terminal here, you can see I am in the virtual environment. And it will remember the commands we typed before because this virtual environment has its own bash or um, CMD history. Let's go up, 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 here it is. So I don't have to retype it again. So we can execute this again. And let's take a look at our Py file. And here it is, okay? It's a small file, of course, but let's move it here. We don't really need that now. Okay, so now let me copy and paste the template class. It's going to be in engine.py. Okay, here it is. My file, class, structure, and function names will look a lot like a typical game, game's engine structure, as 70 plus percent of my programming experience actually comes from developing game engines. Okay, so on our first line, we actually are including our UI main window, which is this, that was generated by the designer and then converted into the Pi. Then we're including just widgets at this stage. We're not gonna need anything else for this skeleton class. We're gonna be adding extra modules from PyQt framework when we need them. And of course we need this import.sys uh, to make sure we can communicate with the operating system. So let's take a look at the class. I'm calling it DNA engine. But if you're not interested in bioinformatics direction of this project, feel free to use any names that fit your project, okay? So the first function we have is our init function, of course. We need to make sure that we are initializing the Qt application and we are creating a window that we can access and talk to. The next one is going to be named setup. That's where we load our UI file, which is this file we have generated. We're gonna load it and we're gonna set it up. So the next one is run. The run at this stage just creates an event loop and listens to the inputs and whatever that comes from operating system, for example. If we close the application by clicking X on it, uh, the operating system actually sends a signal close to our application 
and our application will automatically handle the signal from the operating system and close our window. And of course the last one is display and it just shows, it just starts rendering, drawing a window on the screen. So again, if you did some game programming for example, this looks a lot like a typical game or games engine where you initialize something, you set it up, you run it and you display it. Okay, so now we have this class and we have our UI, uh, test UI created here. Let's create an application. And our application file is going to be tiny. All we do is we include our DNA engine. So let's actually move this to here. Okay. So now we have this DNA engine skeleton class and we of course are importing the DNA engine. Okay. And here we create our main function and then we have just four lines of code. We are instantiating the class. So now we have DNA engine and we're just running setup, display and run. Okay. So if we're going to try running this code now, of course, we're going to have our window with the changed text that we did in the designer. Okay, so again, this was a very short video to prepare us for actual work. In our next video, we're going to start adding different components and we're going to take a look at how we can uh, make the button, for example, communicate with the uh, text edit. So we're going to enter some text, we're going to click the button and something else happens. So we're going to be looking at the logic in our next videos. But now we are armed with this fully working project. Hopefully you made sure that you're running it in the virtual environment. If you're not sure how to do that, go back to the first video to look it up. Okay. And we're going to be extending this class. And if the functionality, for example, file handling, reading, opening, checking, parsing, we're going to add those functions here to test them. And then we're going to create a separate module, for example, a file handler dot pi. And we're going to transfer, we're going to create a class for those uh, set of functions. And then we're going to include that or we're going to inherit uh, from that class. So that becomes a part of our main class. Okay. And if you're followed my DNA toolkit uh, series of videos, uh, we're going to be including that in our project because we wrapped it into a class in our last video, which is number nine. It will be super easy. We're just going to create a folder. We're going to drop that file in there and we're going to include that into our DNA engine. Okay. So thanks a lot for watching and listening as always. And in our next video, we're going to start actually working on some code. So until next time, Rebel Coder signing out.